When you think about what the ancient world was like, you might imagine a calm, serene environment in which animals peacefully inhabit a world, yet to be tainted by cities, roads, and factories. Primitive humans are usually illustrated as living a simple and peaceful lifestyle, in which they focus primarily on farming, raising livestock, and taking care of their families. It's easy to imagine an environment like the Garden of Eden when thinking about what the distant past was like. However, there are darker aspects to the ancient world that most people are not aware of. A dark side. There is evidence that the ancient world was far more corrupt. Even thousands of years ago, there seems to have been both indirect and direct tampering with the genetic code of animals and even humans, corrupting and changing the environment from peaceful to chaotic. Evidence for the genetic alteration of ancient organisms has been discovered in depictions of strange hybrid creatures of all types that extend throughout every region on Earth. Modern experiments have proven the possibility of monstrous hybrid creatures like those depicted in ancient art, and demonstrated the disastrous effect of these corrupted organisms on the balance of nature. The depictions carved into the ancient temples in India are evident signs that the constructors were privy to the practice of genetic engineering. There are many images of cells, eggs, spermatozoa, and DNA on the stone walls of these temples. Cells are so small that they can only be seen with very high-powered microscopes, which are believed by mainstream historians to have not existed in ancient India. And yet, these microscopic components are depicted frequently and in detail. The process of fertilization is often shown in ancient architecture in India. Furthermore, the image of the DNA double helix in the form of two snakes coiled around each other is also shown. This combination of snakes and DNA may have been shown to indicate the corruption of the genetic code, because snakes are the main symbol of corruption in many ancient cultures. This same symbol is depicted in ancient art found in other regions. Each of these regions depicting what could be corrupted DNA also share a very wide array of hybrid creatures in their art. The types of hybrids depicted in ancient art include both animal chimeras and human hybrids. In India, there are carvings showing creatures with horns, long tails, slender horse-like bodies, and elephant trunks, known by modern Hindus as the Yali. These creatures are completely different from any known living animal in the present day. A hybrid between what appears to be a lion and a three-horned gazelle with the tusks of a boar can be seen in many ancient temples. There are also carvings of a goblin-like hybrid creature with horns, large ears, a human-like body and face, and strange appendages, with the chimera sitting in a crouching position, as are sphinx with humanoid faces and feline bodies without wings. Naga, which are hybrids between humans and serpents, are another common sight in the ancient stone carvings of these regions. A monstrous creature worshipped by the Hindus as a god named Narasimha was carved in many ancient temples throughout India. This giant chimera somewhat resembles a humanoid spider, with two large mandibles present over its mouth, and many limbs. Modern Indians have made the assumption that this hybrid creature they call Narasimha is part lion and part human, but there is no indication that he is part lion, based on the pre-Indian stone carvings of the chimera. Narasimha, based on its arachnid-like features, may have been the original Spider-Man. Modern Indians believe that the person Narasimha is holding is a male. However, you can clearly see breasts on this person, but no indication of male genitalia, making it a female. This is just one of many examples of modern Indians misinterpreting the depictions created by pre-Indian societies. Narasimha appears to be doing something to the female stomach, with a symbol resembling DNA coming outward from her body, as if Narasimha was extracting DNA from her. It does make sense for him to extract DNA from her stomach, since the cells in the stomach lining regenerate as quickly as every two days, making it a prime location on adult humans to collect fresh samples of DNA because cells contain DNA in the nucleus and the mitochondria. Other ancient depictions of Narasimha show him doing the same thing to this woman, with two more apparent DNA-like double helices protruding from her abdomen as he appears to tear it open. 
Both of these depictions also show Narasimha reaching his hand into an opening in the woman's leg, possibly indicating the extraction of stem cells from bone marrow, which the leg would be an ideal location for due to the diameter of leg bones. In other depictions, Narasimha is shown grabbing another female from behind and holding a sword to her, while she appears to be frightened, further showing Narasimha's extreme interest in human women. A creature known as Ganesha is another common depiction in ancient pre-Indian art, with the having the head of an elephant and the body of a human. Another hybrid in pre-Indian art is a humanoid known as Hayagriva, which has four arms and the head of a horse. Many giant humanoids are also shown in ancient pre-Indian art. These giants are often shown attacking and even devouring humans that are much smaller than them. In the Udiyagiri caves in India, a very large humanoid with the head of a boar is shown attacking a person as the onlookers surrounding the monster appear to be terrified. Modern Hindus believe this creature to be an avatar of one of the gods they worship named Vishnu, but there is no way to truly know who this human-devouring hybrid giant really is. Even a minotaur is shown battling smaller humanoids in the Malapuram temple in India. Across Indonesia, which is the island region south of India, it is common to find ancient statues depicting monsters directly referred to by the locals as demons. These creatures have large vampiric fangs, bugged out eyes, and often pointed ears and long tongues. Birds with the faces of women, reminiscent of creatures called harpies, are also carved in ancient temples in Indonesia. The modern-day country of Cambodia is also filled with ancient depictions of hybrid creatures. Ape hybrids with humanoid characteristics are depicted on ancient Cambodian temples and appear to be accompanying humans into battle. Another creature depicted on many ancient temples throughout Cambodia, as well as in India, is called the Makala, and has the body of a fish, the trunk of an elephant, horns like a goat, small ears, and only two tiger-like feet. There is another creature inside the Makala's mouth that appears to be a horned primate with a mane like a lion's and a more human-like body. Another creature, also referred to as a Makala, even though it's very different in appearance, has an elephant-like body with a large mouth full of teeth like a crocodile and tiger-like feet. Based on these images of the wide variety of chimeras, as well as the depictions of DNA and cells in ancient temples, Southeastern Asia, especially India, appears to have been a hotspot of genetic engineering in the ancient past. It was certainly not only this region, though, where these experiments would have occurred. In ancient Mesopotamian art, a wide array of hybrid creatures are depicted. A chimera known as Lamasu is a lion-bodied, winged creature with the face of a man and either the feet of a lion or the hooves of a bull, and usually having five feet rather than four. The goddess Ishtar has the wings and talons of a bird, and appears to be gigantic in size, compared to the lions beneath her feet. The Anunnaki appear as winged humanoids, sometimes with the faces of men, and other times with the faces of birds. Illustrations of an individual claimed to be Gilgamesh show a giant holding a normal lion that appears to be the size of a house cat compared to him. Dragon-like creatures lacking wings are also commonly depicted in ancient Mesopotamian art. Men with the bodies of fish, resembling merpeople, are illustrated also. In Iran, there are strange ancient stone carvings of bird-like creatures, which happen to resemble the recently found remains of the Montauk monster, which is a creature of unknown identity, discovered off the coast of Montauk, New York in 2008, which the government quickly covered up. A creature who is called Tiamat has the face of a feline, with feathers and large wings, and four large clawed feet, and is shown battling a winged being who is called Marduk. Humanoids with the legs and ears of bulls, sometimes with horns, and very reminiscent of satyrs, are depicted also. Ancient art found across the country of Egypt is well known for containing hybrid creatures. Many of these chimeras were worshipped as gods. Some have the bodies of humans, but the heads of various animals. The Egyptian god, called Set or Seth, is often referred to as a cryptid because its head does not resemble any known animal. The Great Sphinx of Giza is another well-known example of a hybrid creature in ancient art, having the body of a lion in the face of a human. 
Other creatures in pre-Egyptian art are much like the harpies depicted in ancient art in Cambodia, having the bodies of birds, but the heads of humans. The so-called gods and goddesses in the ancient art of Mesoamerica are also chimeric creatures. One sinister-looking hybrid, claimed to be a goddess called Coatlicue, is a large humanoid with the face of a serpent and some other creature, and it seems to have a clear fetish for human body parts, based on the hands, skulls, and other parts it wears on itself. A creature called Camazots appears to be a humanoid with large fangs and wings, making it resemble a bat or a gargoyle. A monster referred to as Tlaltecutli has a face resembling a human's, but with a long, serrated tongue and misshapen limbs ending in hands and feet with abnormally large claws. There's another hybrid who has a very large, gaping mouth and sharp teeth and is associated with the more human-like chimera, but clearly is not the same type of creature. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean on Easter Island, there are many depictions of humanoids with bird-like faces, very reminiscent of the bird-like humanoids in India, Mesopotamia, and Egypt. Modern experiments have proven the possibility of monstrous hybrid creatures, like those depicted in ancient art. Some of these chimeras can be created naturally by different species procreating until hybrid offspring are produced, while other chimeras have been successfully created in laboratories. In the early 1900s, a Russian scientist named Ilya Ivanov used artificial insemination to create a wide variety of hybrid offspring. Among his works, Ivanov created an antelope-cow hybrid. These antelope-cow chimeras are fertile, meaning that they are able to reproduce. Many antelope-cow hybrids roam India and Pakistan nowadays. They're known as Nilgai, and are technically classified as a species of antelope, but they have the bodies of male cattle, or bulls. And the name Nilgai is even Hindi for blue bull. As the name implies, the color of the Nilgai is closer to the typical color of bulls rather than antelopes. One of the biggest indications that the Nilgai is part cattle is actually its neck which is more like a bull's neck than an antelope's. Even the noses of the Nilgai are more like that of bulls rather than antelope's. Another strange type of animal that has been born in India on multiple occasions are the goats that have very human-like faces. The locals have begun to worship them, believing them to be avatars of one of their gods. Another human-faced goat was born in Argentina, it is supposedly unknown what caused these goats to appear the way they do. Another hybrid-like creature was born in Argentina. A man had a dog who gave birth to a puppy that had a trunk in place of its nose, giving it the appearance of being a dog-taper hybrid. And it's worth noting that tapers are abundant in Argentina. A pig was born in Cuba in 2017 that looked remarkably similar to a monkey. It lacked the typical snout that pigs have, and its eyes were in the middle of its face, like a primate's, rather than on the sides of its face, as pig's eyes usually are. And again, it's worth noting that several different species of monkeys are native to Cuba, such as green monkeys and several species of macaques, which share many similarities to the mutant pig that was born in Cuba. It's quite possible that rather than these creatures being deformed, they could actually be hybrid offspring. Animals of different species are often seen procreating, and are capable of producing offspring. Even humans, unfortunately, attempt to procreate with animals on occasion, which, if done often enough, could eventually produce some disturbing results. Most people would deny the possibility of interspecies breeding to this degree, because it's so unsettling and rare. But scientific findings do indicate that, on occasion, things could work out, whether or not these results are wanted. Two Chinese scientists successfully created a human-chimpanzee hybrid in 1967 through artificial insemination, impregnating a female chimpanzee with male human DNA. The fetus of the hybrid grew properly within the chimp, and it would have developed into a functional organism if it was left to grow. The chimera was destroyed, however, when Chinese citizens learned about the experiment through publications. Several activists stormed the laboratory and put the pregnant chimp down to prevent it from giving birth to the human-chimp hybrid. 
In 2017, 186 embryos of pig-human hybrids were successfully created in the United States. The scientists were supposedly required to destroy the embryos 28 days later from their initial creation, but they stated that most of the embryos developed properly and would have developed into functional pig-human hybrid organisms. The scientists in control of the project explained that their intention is to eventually develop pig-like creatures with human organs, including lungs and hearts, that can be legally harvested on demand whenever hospital patients need transplants. Scientists have also been able to create human-animal hybrids by injecting already living animals with human cells that can replace the animal cells, turning them into chimeras. In 2014, a team of scientists injected millions of human brain cells into the brains of several mice. Almost every cell in the mice's brains were replaced with the human brain cells. The scientists ran a variety of experiments on the mice after their brains were converted into essentially miniature human brains, and it was determined that the memories of the mice improved over four times, showing that their brains, as well as their minds, had become more human. In 2007, Yale University scientists injected five monkeys with human neural stem cells in the same way that the mice's brains were injected with cells. The human neural cells migrated into the monkeys' brains and were reported to have improved their mental capabilities. The scientists confirmed that injecting more human neural cells into the monkeys' brains would eventually enable the monkeys to process thoughts in a similar way to humans. Many species of animals have mated both in captivity and in the wild with other species, producing hybrid offspring. Examples include the narluga, which is a hybrid between a narwhal and a beluga whale, and the wolfin, which is a hybrid between a false killer whale and a bottlenose dolphin. Killer bees are an aggressive hybrid species created by a Brazilian geneticist named Warwick Kerr in the mid-1900s by breeding East African lowland honeybees with European honeybees. These hybrid killer bees are much stronger and faster than any other type of bee. They can chase people up to a quarter of a mile and have killed over a thousand humans as well as horses and other large animals. Hordes of killer bees will swarm a single target, resulting in over 10 times as many stings as the average bee attack by non-hybrid bees. Many species of big cats have also been able to interbreed, creating hybrid species. The most notable big cat hybrids are the product of successfully breeding tigers and lions. A male lion mating with a female tiger produces a liger, while a female lion mating with a male tiger produces a tigan. Male tigans and male ligers are sterile, meaning that they're unable to reproduce. However, female tigans and female ligers are usually fertile, so they are able to produce offspring with male lions or male tigers. Tigans are striped like tigers and are only around 6 feet tall on average when standing on their hind legs. On the other hand, ligers are much less striped, with a color palette closer to a lion's. Ligers can grow to be up to 12 feet tall when standing on their hind legs, which is twice as tall as a lion, and taller than any other feline in the world. Due to the size and continual growth of ligers, they have voracious appetites, and they need to eat at least 100 pounds of meat a day to stay healthy. A regular lion only needs to eat 10 pounds of meat a day, meaning that ligers need to eat 10 times as much food as lions every single day. This food requirement puts a strain on the ligers and quickly depletes food sources for themselves and other animals. The reason why ligers grow to be so large is because female tigers do not have growth inhibiting genes, nor do male lions, so when bred, their offspring do not have any growth inhibitors. Male lions also pass down growth maximizing genes, so when combined with the lack of growth inhibitors, it creates an unusually giant hybrid. Tigans do not grow to be so large, because female lions, which are always the mothers of tigans, do have growth inhibiting genes, which are passed down to their offspring, and prevents them from growing too large. This same principle applies to other species, not just lions and tigers. For example, human women's growth suppressing genes are only passed down to offspring if they're activated by the father's genes. If a human woman was able to create a hybrid offspring with a species that does not have the correct type of genes to activate the mother's growth suppressors, then the hybrid offspring produced could potentially grow to be far larger than the average human. 
the same way that ligers grow to be much larger than lions or tigers. Even pure humans can suffer from a condition known as gigantism, in which their bodies produce too many growth hormones, usually due to cancer of the pituitary gland. While it is common for people of this height to have frail legs that struggle to support their weight, there are many examples of people of much larger than average height having large enough bones and muscles to support their weight, even being physically fit enough to be athletes and giving them a major advantage over their competitors. As you'll recall from earlier in the video, there are many depictions of giant humanoids and hybrids in ancient art across the world. There's a variety of myths and legends from thousands of years ago, which claim that giants once roamed the earth. The ancient Greeks have legends about the Titans, who were gigantic hybrid offspring between the gods and mortal humans. The Cyclops and Hecatonchires of Greek mythology were the siblings of the Titans, but the other Titans outcast the Cyclops and Hecatonchires because of their disturbing appearance. An ancient Mesopotamian text called the Epic of Gilgamesh describes a giant hybrid species called the Anunnaki who ruled over humans. According to the text, the Anunnaki were said to be the offspring between a sky god called Anu and a woman called Ki, making the Anunnaki part god and part human. According to the Epic of Gilgamesh, a flood was sent upon the entire earth by the highest god to destroy the Anunnaki or to force them from the face of the earth and to retreat into caverns to escape the flood. The ancient Hindu documents, known as the Vedas, describe a giant humanoid species called the Daityas, who existed around 5,000 years ago and towered over regular humans at around 32 feet or 10 meters tall. According to the Vedas, the Daityas were wiped out by a worldwide flood that occurred just over 4,000 years ago. These accounts of the Daityas closely mirror the accounts of the Nephilim in the Biblical Book of Genesis. The Nephilim were giant humanoid hybrids produced as human women made it with a type of angelic species named the Watchers before the worldwide flood. These hybrid offspring were much larger than the normal human, averaging between 12 and 36 feet or 3.5 to 10 meters tall and possibly reaching even taller heights. And they were known for drinking human blood, eating their flesh, and forcing any human woman they chose to procreate with them. Like the Ligers discussed previously, the Nephilim may have grown to such enormous heights because the Watchers had different genetics from normal men, and therefore the growth inhibiting genes passed down from the mothers to the offspring were never activated, causing these hybrids to grow beyond the height of humans. And just as ligers need to eat 10 times as much food as a lion, these giant humanoids also needed to eat far more than humans need to. They most likely started off eating animals and even vegetation, but according to these records, there were a great number of these giants across the world. As these giants each devoured possibly hundreds of pounds of food each day, the food sources they relied on eventually became scarce, and they began to devour humans. Many of these giants perished during the worldwide flood, but a large number of them perished before the flood as they fought each other during an event referred to as the Titan Wars, probably mainly due to competition over food resources. And as the Epic of Gilgamesh insinuates, some of these giants even survived the worldwide flood by hiding themselves away in airtight chambers, which is why there are records of giants after the flood, and even in modern times, by witnesses across the world. A video about monsters would not be complete without the discussion of vampires and werewolves. There are many depictions of vampire-like creatures with extremely long fangs in ancient art across the world. The oldest description of a vampire in ancient mythology is the Egyptian goddess called Sekhmet. She is described as a goddess of war who drank blood, and due to her desire to drink human blood, she destroyed many people. Other examples of vampire-like creatures include Kali from ancient pre-Indian art, as well as the Balinese demons who have very long fangs, and potentially the creatures depicted in ancient Mesoamerican art. The Mesopotamian Queen of the Night, Ishtar, is also described as being like a vampire in ancient texts. The similarities between these creatures across different cultures are so similar to each other that they extend beyond a coincidence. Creatures with dog-like heads and human-like bodies, reminiscent of werewolves, are depicted in ancient art from Mesopotamia. They're also shown in ancient Egyptian art, most prominently in the form of creatures called Webwawet and Anubis. Depictions of werewolf-like creatures extend out to art made by later cultures, 
such as the Greeks and the Romans, who either based these depictions on pre-flood art of canine humanoids, or the Greeks and Romans may have even seen these creatures themselves. Post-flood Aztec drawings also depict a humanoid canine they call Zolatl, which is based on pre-Aztec stone carvings of a strange dog-like creature. Although each of these humanoid canines seem to resemble werewolves, it may be more accurate to call them dogmen instead. The difference between a werewolf and a dogman is that dogmen always appear as dog-human hybrids, never transforming into humans, while werewolves are believed to transform, according to modern mythology. If these ancient creatures depicted were hybrids between canines and humanoids, then they would actually be considered to be dogmen and not werewolves, according to modern cultures, since they would not be able to transform because their appearance would be due to genetic corruption rather than being caused by a curse. Modern people across the world claim to have seen humanoid canines. The descriptions of these creatures by eyewitnesses are quite similar to the depictions created by ancient people. It's very likely that just as some of the giants were able to escape the worldwide flood, some of these cryptids were also able to survive. I've actually discovered a way in which these cryptids could have escaped the flood, and when I discovered it, I was shocked by how much it made sense, and I've never heard anyone else discuss it before. The topic is quite complicated, though, and therefore I'll save this subject for an upcoming video. Whether these creatures could have been produced by interspecies breeding, or with a bit more help from technologies, like what scientists use today to create hybrids, it is still possible for creatures like the Yali, Tlaltakutli, or even the Sphinx to have existed in real life. It is possible that, in the ancient past, these strange creatures lived across the world, with their striking appearances and great size and strength, leading the ancient people to depict them in their art and possibly even worship them. Just as modern Hindus worship these mutants and hybrids that are born recently, as well as those shown in ancient art across India. The giant humanoids depicted in ancient art and described in ancient documents are also genetically possible and seem to have once existed, judging by how widespread these depictions are. If all of these creatures existed in ancient times, though, then why do we not discover their remains? This may be due to government-run organizations collecting these findings before they're publicized, so that we do not have proof that such creatures really existed. The Smithsonian Institute has large underground storages in which skeletons and the taxidermized remains of a wide variety of creatures are located, in addition to many ancient artifacts. Any discoveries that might prove that hybrid species, especially human hybrids, existed in the ancient past would be intentionally hidden away, since mainstream academia asserts that it's not possible for chimeras such as these to exist and they do not want to have their assertions disputed, it's in their best interest to suppress evidence of these ancient chimeras. It would not be possible for mainstream scientists and historians to destroy every piece of ancient art depicting hybrids, however. Instead, they insist that these depictions are the product of imagination, despite the fact that hybrid creatures of the same variety are depicted in ancient art across the world. The archaeologists who discover anomalous remains may actually be paid off by the world's governments to stay silent about their finds. Although the knowledge of chimeras is hidden from the public, it does not mean that scientists do not believe that they're genetically possible. The fact that so many experiments have been performed to create hybrid creatures reveals that geneticists and those who provide them with funding understand that hybrid creatures are genetically feasible. The types of experiments that are revealed to the public are almost certainly just the tip of the iceberg. There's very likely an innumerable amount of disturbing lab-grown chimeras that scientists have created but are kept hidden from the public because they would either stir up too much controversy, like the human-chimp hybrid created by Chinese scientists, or they would be illegal according to ethics laws, and the scientists would end up having their funding pulled, or they would be fined, sued, or arrested and their experiments would be shut down. A lot of fear surrounds the topic of hybrid creatures. While hybrids seem to have been worshipped by ancient cultures, they're also depicted as attacking people. It's very possible that the ancient world, infested with all of these chimeras, was far more terrifying than historians would have you believe. This video was produced with the generous support of my Patreon community. Joseph Thompson, Jeffrey Schallenberg, Ablobonic, Adam Walker, The Biggest Birdie, Liam Flatley, Nathaniel Lee, Top Secret, Alvaro Aguayo, Matthew Tyler, 
and Mama Lou.